Hello and welcome to another episode of the Synapse e-learning video series. With us today we have Mr. Benedict Axisa, a consultant surgeon specialized in upper GI and bariatric surgery, serving at Mater Dei Hospital and also a visiting senior lecturer at the University of Malta. Mr. Axisa, thank you for accepting our invitation and being with us here today. Uh, we're going to be speaking about bariatric surgery. And my first question to Mr. Axisa would be, what is bariatric surgery and how has this particular field developed since its origin up till now? Um, excellent. Thank you, Gabriel, for and the sign-up team for inviting me um, for this interview. Uh, what is bariatric surgery? Um, bariatric surgery is weight loss surgery. Surgery to help patients manage um, their weight. Um, basically, uh, during a, a patient's um, progress to becoming obese, there are various levels of obesity. Um, and obesity becomes a problem when it becomes a risk to health. Um, commonly we grade obesity into um, various types depending on the BMI, which is a ratio of the weight uh, relative to the height of an individual. Um, a normal weight, uh, a normal BMI would be between 18 and 25. An overweight individual would have a BMI between 25 and 30. And above 30, that is regarded as morbidly obese meaning that uh, the weight has now become a risk to health and not just an aesthetic, an aesthetic issue. Uh, obesity is then divided into, into further subgroups. Obesity type 1 is a BMI from 30 to 35. Above 35 is where surgical intervention is potentially an option. Um, and that is where we come in as bariatric surgeons. How has it de developed? It has gone an enorm uh, undergone an enormous transformation in the past two decades and bariatric surgery has become widely practiced. Uh, in America alone, over 200,000 procedures um, are performed annually to treat obesity and that is estimated to be treating only 1% of the population. Um, these days there are various well established uh, procedures, um, bariatric surgical procedures with a very well defined um, morbidity profile and uh, uh, safety profile and that is why we can help patients better using our um, surgery. You've mentioned the classification criteria for, to make a patient eligible for consideration for bariatric surgery. Given um, the high morbidity which obesity entails should bariatric surgery be uh, considered as a last resort when other weight management practices have not managed to achieve our desired goals? Uh, that's a very good question. I wouldn't say that bariatric surgery should be considered as a last resort, um, but when one entails, um, uh, one, one should basically it should be considered as part of an overall obesity program or obesity package. Uh, obviously, the first uh, the first uh, step is to educate patients. And the ideal situation as where, is where we educate our population to prevent obesity in the first place. And that is where primary care comes in, in the form of education of our population, especially our younger population, to adopt healthy lifestyles, healthy eating, exercise programs, etc., etc., to prevent obesity in the first place. Once obesity develops, then there are various levels, again, at which it can be tackled. Uh, and ideally um, we should uh, first try conservative measures such as adv advocating lifestyle changes, dietary changes to control obesity uh, without resorting to surgery. Uh, that said, obesity is associated with various comorbidities uh, including diabetes, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia um, and other comorbidities such as joint problems and obstructive sleep apnea. And when those start coming in, then surgery has a role um, and needs to be considered. I wouldn't say that surgery should be considered a last resort, in the sense that we shouldn't wait in, 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 pro where, uh, in situations where conservative programs are clearly failing. We shouldn't wait until patients are, have, have had significant um, damage from their comorbidities before considering surgery. And there comes a point where surgery becomes a useful option to help a patient maintain 
as healthy lifestyle, a lifestyle as possible. So in answer to your question, I don't think it should be a last resort, but it should be part of an overall package and part of a patient's journey through an obesity program. Thank you. And, and that being said, a considerable portion of our audience consists of medical practitioners who, in their careers, will get to meet patients who may um, opt or may be a considerate, uh, may, may consider bariatric surgery. So how should the practitioner um, discuss this possibility, explain bariatric surgery, and is there any stigma related to bariatric surgery as a whole? Um, how should the practitioner approach this? Um, the first thing we need to do is to alert patients to the, to the problem. Namely, um, patients need to be made aware that their weight is now at a point where it becomes a risk to their health. And you'd be surprised how many patients do not realize that obesity is not just an aesthetic issue, but also uh, predisposes individuals to developing uh, associated health problems. So the first thing we need to do is to let patients know that obesity is a risk to their health. There is a risk of developing diabetes, hypertension, high blood cholesterol, joint problems, cardiac risks, etc., etc. So the first thing to do is to make patients aware of the problem and advise them to adopt simple measures, lifestyle measures to improve their problem. Once uh, we guide them through this process and it becomes clear that this process is failing or that they need more specialized help, that is the point where surgery or the bariatric team, I should say, comes in um, and that is the point where secondary care has a role to play. Um, we offer a program at Mater Dei Hospital whereby a patient is, refer is referred to the bariatric team uh, and then they are assessed at various levels. Uh, the program is a four-point approach. They are first seen by a bariatric surgeon and given advice with regards to their weight. Uh, we explain to them how their weight has now become a risk to their health. Um, we then uh, explain to them that there, uh, there is a surgical option, but it is not necessary, necessarily the only option, or one does not necessarily have to undergo surgery. Um, we give them a target weight loss. Um, uh, a target weight loss is basically a percentage of the weight which we ask patients to lose by themselves, which demonstrates to us their initiative and their uh, commitment to changing their lifestyle and improving their health. Uh, we then refer them to a dietitian, who obviously reinforces our advice and advises them further on dietary changes which they can adopt to try and improve their weight. Uh, during the process of the consultation we also ask about issues re um, related to um, psychological issues which might have led to an abnormal relationship with food. Some of our patients have undergone major traumas in their lives which they have clearly not overcome yet. So the program also involves um, assessment by a psychologist to see if there are any psychological issues which need to be addressed before resorting to surgery. And we also assess whether patients are likely to be suffering from obstructive sleep apnea and they are then seen by a respiratory physician who does sleep apnea testing. As part of the first visit, we always also do a baseline bariatric screen which includes bloods, including thyroid function tests, baseline, baseline serum cortisol, uh, serum blood glucose to exclude diabetes, um, lipid levels to exclude hypercholesterolemia and other associated comorbidities. So that uh, allows us to adopt a holistic approach um, to managing every aspect of, of obesity. So undoubtedly this multidisciplinary approach is crucial um, for the management of these patients. So undoubtedly the bariatric team, which you've just uh, explained, is a multidisciplinary team specialized on taking care of obesity in a patient. And it's specialized in this field. But Absolutely. with regards to other practitioners, for example the general practitioner, mm -hmm. what role does he have in this uh, management plan? I think the general practitioner has a, has a key role. Um, the first point would be to advise the patient um, to um, basically look into their lifestyle and try adopt change and adopt changes to lose weight. Uh, the most important thing we look for is that patients are motivated. They have an internal desire to try and lose weight rather than be pushed into a system, because being pushed into a system uh, just has been shown not to work. And hence, why we give patients the target weight loss for them to show a certain degree of commitment to changing their lifestyle to lose weight. 
Uh, following surgery, the GP has a crucial role um, and, and we believe that eventually, once they have been through the bariatric program, uh, they should be discharged back to the GP and the follow-up can easily be in the hands of the GPs um, in the sense of basically monitoring their uh, supplemental intake and they can easily be followed up by the GP. So Mr. Oxisa, correct me if I'm wrong, but right now there's a move towards increased health awareness to prevent um, such morbid states of obesity. And with this current trend, do you think that bariatric surgery as it is right now will diminish over time its usefulness? Uh, um, I would love to think that the role of bariatric surgery will diminish uh, with increasing um, education of our younger population, children, etc., etc., and also education of the adult population into adopting healthier lifestyle. And as people begin to understand that obesity is not just an aesthetic issue and a health issue, hopefully the levels of the population in our society will begin to uh, diminish. I believe there will also always be a role for bariatric surgery because uh, a certain proportion of individuals do need additional assistance in the form of surgery, but hopefully that proportion will diminish with time. Mr. Oxisa, we're nearing the end of our interview. What is your take-home message? Uh, take-home message is obesity is a health uh, issue, not just an aesthetic issue, and we need to try and educate our population into uh, regarding as obes obesity as a risk to our health. Uh, surgery should not be regarded as the last resort, but it does have a role to play in a proportion of, indiv of individuals where obesity uh, conservative measures have failed and obesity has become a serious risk to health. Thank you, Mr. Axisa, for your time. It's been a pleasure to have you here with us uh, on the Synapse. Um, uh, we've reached the end of this interview. We hope that it has helped to further your knowledge on bariatric surgery. We urge you to share this video with your professional colleagues. Thank you for your time.